Okay, here is our question. Um, we have a helicopter which is dropping a crate and we want the crate to land on a truck as the truck is moving. So we have a helicopter dropping a crate and a road and a truck driving along there. And what we want is for the crate and the truck both to be here at the same time. We need to cue the helicopter when to drop it. The obvious way to do that would be to have some sort of mark on the road and when the truck passed that mark you knew. So we want to work out where to draw that mark. I suppose you could do it with some timing, say that you um, start the truck from a known distance and at four seconds afterwards do it. But in any case you're going to need to have a known distance. Let's work out what that distance would be. Can we do it using energy? Uh, no, uh, because energy never gives you precisely when and where things are going to be. It only ever tells you what will happen, not when. So we're going to have to use forces and accelerations. We know the velocity here, V1, which is 60 kilometers per hour. We will need to convert that into meters per second. And we know that is 90 meters high. And that's one meter high. So the actual drop distance is 89 meters. Now horizontally, motion is pretty straightforward. It's traveling at a constant speed. So in a time t, the distance is just going to be velocity times the time. Vertically, it's more complicated. It's starting at rest, but will accelerate downwards. You probably remember an equation for this. The equation is the distance s equals ut plus half a t squared. In this case, there is no initial velocity, and a equals g. So the distance, that's the distance s, equals half g t squared. So we have three equations. We know that um, vertically, the distance dropped, 89 meters, is half g t squared. We know that horizontally, the distance traveled is just the velocity times the time. And we know the velocity is 60 kilometers per hour. Let's convert that into meters per second. So it's 60 times 1,000, just to convert from kilometers to meters, divided by 60 times 60. Let's bring our calculator along for that. 60 times 1,000 equals divided by 60 equals divided by 60 equals 16.7 meters per second. So let's rearrange the equations. We want to find d. d equals vt. We don't really care about t, but we know that s equals half g t squared. So rearranging that, t squared equals 2s over g. Take the square root of both sides and substitute it into there. We end up with, draw it up here, d equals v root 2s over g. Before um, putting numbers into this equation, let's check it's plausible while it's still in the form of algebra. Um, if the velocity of the truck is greater, 
it would have to start further away. That makes sense. If the helicopter is higher, it would have to start further away, which makes sense. If gravity was more, you would do it on Jupiter. The truck would have to be lower, which makes sense. We can also check the units. D has units of meters per second. Sorry, that's no, not units of meters, distance, meters. So it's velocity as meters over seconds. Then you have the square root. Two is just a number, doesn't have units. S is distance, that is units of meters. And G is meters per second squared. So that's meters over seconds, square root, the meters cancel, seconds squared, which is just meters. So dimensions check. Plausibility, functional form. Check. Now let's plug the numbers in. I bring the calculator back. So D is the velocity, which you worked out as 16.7. times the square root, let's open bracket, 2 times the distance, which is 89 metres, divided by gravity, 9.8. Close the brackets, equals 74 metres. So D equals 74 metres. Is that a plausible looking number? I think so. Um, if it was a millimetre, that would clearly be too small. If it was a kilometre, that would clearly be too big. Um, if it was negative, that would be silly. So something of order, several tens of metres, sounds about right to my intuition of this. So it looks plausible.